good morning to everyone. I hope uh, it's a nice day meeting you all again in this classroom. Today, we are going to start off with a uh, very uh, important topic, uh, marine boilers and steam engineering. Uh, it's, my name is uh, Professor Bhupati Baskaran, Chief Engineer. Um, uh, I belong to Marine Engineering Department, Amit University. The, the topic comes like this. Uh, you know, the uh, fundamentals of uh, boiler. Let us start with uh, why do we need a boiler and so on. It uh, comes under lesson one. And here, the heat transfer. Boiler, what is boiler? We have all seen it in our home. A small, uh, you know, pressure cooker with, uh, you know, the mummy used to cook your rice and so on. Now, wh what happens then? We just put in the rice and water and then put the cover in and lid tighten it with the gasket, clean nice gasket with a you know safety arrangement on top and within a matter of 5 to 10 minutes it starts giving out uh, steam and uh, you know once uh, the appropriate time is met um, uh, we stop the uh, you know the uh, fire uh, the burner and then uh, as and when required we open up and we use it the rice gets cooked up now here in a uh, heat transfer three ways of uh, transferring the heat radiation conduction and Conviction. Now, looking into it, the conviction method, radiation method leading to straight here in a boiler. What happens? Molecular kinetic energy is greater at high temperatures. More molecules can uh, escape the surfaces yes, as you heat up. If the liquid is open to air, now here the liquid is open to air, you know, then the pressure of the air opposes the escape of the molecules. The temperature at which the vapor, vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure is called as boiling point. Now, what is boiling point? The temperature at which the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Vapor pressure equal to the atmospheric pressure is called boiling point. Now, here the steam is not perfectly a gas. It's not just a gas cumber as it is. Now, however, steam possesses properties like those of gas, namely pressure, volume, temperature, internal, I mean, uh, internal energy, the fifth one is enthalpy and sixth one is entropy. Here, this is the uh, sample boiler, a very simple uh, design. Just, uh, just let us learn a little bit about simple design and then go into uh, detail. Now, where is boiler used on board a ship? Like, let's take a motor ship. In a motor ship, we need a boiler. The reason is we receive a bunkers. You know, in bunkers, when we take it into the bunker tank, it comes to 990 CST centistro at 50 degrees centigrade. We receive the bunkers into our bunkering tank. Now, can we use this oil straight into our internal combustion engine for injecting the fuel into the engine IC engines? We call it whether it's a two stroke or four stroke. No, we have to heat it up. To a temperature, uh, I mean, uh, we have to heat it up and bring down the viscosity between 7 to 12 CST and 145 degrees centigrade. Approximately, it reaches to this viscosity. Now, you are reducing the viscosity, and at this viscosity, you are sending it through the fuel injector in an IC engine. Now, the same in the boiler. What happens is you have to reduce the viscosity from 990 to 7 to 12 CST. Of course, I didn't touch the purification part in our marine auxiliary engines. Now, sir will be uh, taking about, uh, you know, purifiers, clarifiers and how the oil is purified and so on. I'm directly going into the boiler system. So, 990 CST brought down to 7 to 12 CST and injected into the burner. Here, at this place, your burner arrangement is made, a uh, design, and you inject it here. Along with the air mixture, the fuel burns. You know, as the fuel burns, the heat passes through. The heat passes through this. You see this 
flue gas passes through this line and uh, gets to the hot gas outlet to the furnace. Now, you can see the remaining portion is filled with water. You see here, it's filled with water. It's, the outside is filled with water. Now, this water, what happens is heat transfer takes place between the flue gas, which is at a very high temperature, maybe around 500 to 600 degrees centigrade and little above that too, transfers the heat to the water via the tube and the water evaporates and slowly it collects, it collects here in the form of a steam and the steam outlet, it is taken by the steam outlet and it is used in various places. Let us see where all we use the steam and why do you actually need this boiler? Right. Here. So, in a uh, second, uh, I mean, and then uh, the next step of design, you could say, designing of a boiler. You know, here, here you can see here the cool, uh, I mean, the uh, feed water enters into the, um, the uh, you know, um, steam drum or uh, water drum, it enters in and it passes via the down comers. It goes down via the down comers, passes via the tubes and just raises up. As it gets heated up with this, you know, hot flue uh, gas, it gets heated up and it passes up. The, it becomes lighter, vaporizes and it comes up to the upper point and the steam is collected here in the steam chamber and this steam is utilized in various places. Let's see the uses of steam there, a list of 14 items are there. Wherever we use steam, we can go through all that. Now here, the fuel and air mixture is passed in Burn, continual burning takes place, conversion takes place, and the flue gas passes to be obtained. Here, here you can see a boiler, a big size boiler. We call it as Foster Wheeler Detail Boiler, a bigger size, but it's used in steamships. In a motor ship, it, the boiler size is small. A pressure up to uh, 6 to 7 kg pressure boilers we use. But in a steamship, we need high capacity steam to run the steam turbine. In a motor ship, let's make it very clear, in a motor ship, the internal combustion engine, a two-stroke engine, develops an RPM of 100 RPM directly connected to the propeller shaft and the propeller is made to rotate. But here in a steam ship, the boiler steam is utilized to run the turbine. The turbine rotates at a very high RPM, between 12,000 to 18,000 RPM it rotates. Now we cannot directly couple it to the propeller shaft. We have to reduce the RPM. We have a gearbox arrangement. We have a gearbox arrangement, a huge big gearbox in a steamship to reduce the RPM to 100 and it's connected to the propeller and the propeller rotates. Now here for such a boiler, you know, you can but such a steamship, you need a boiler of this size with a furnace alone, the furnace space, you know, boiler furnace uh, tubing arrangement. You can see here the burner points are there. There are about four burners or so. Some ships you have the uh, roof type burner system that we will go in detail. Now here it's in a horizontal type burners arrangements are put up here, and uh, these are the water tubing, the water tubing forms, the tubing forms the furnace. The tubing itself forms the furnace. As the flue gas from here burning out, it passes through these tubes and just goes to the uptake. That is the superheated steam and then the I mean, uh, uh, economizers um, and then you have the air tree heater and so on. That is for big boilers. Okay? Foster wheeler, D-type, bigger size boilers in steam ship. In a motor ship it is small. Okay, boiler. One of the most important items of equipment on board a ship is the boiler. Boilers are used for numerical purposes, various places, whether it is steam powered or has a diesel as a main propulsion engine and there is no ship without the boiler. I have already told you, whether it is a motor ship or a steam ship, you need a boiler. The size is only very there. Okay. If a ship is a steam powered, I will explain this, I am just going again. Uh, steam, uh, steam power chair, two or more boilers will be provided to pro provide high temperature, high pressure steam. Now, if a ship is carrying a diesel, uh, carrying a diesel engine as main propulsion system, one or two small boilers are used for running various ship machineries and services. They uh, the article described. The construction and working of a marine boiler. 
Now here you can see a simple boiler. Yeah, where you have the uh, you know water entering inside, and then it goes via the down commons. The further arrangement is here. The flue gas is passed on. Heat of the uh, you know water. The heat transfer takes place between the flue gas and the water through that tubing arrangement. I mean steel structure, and then the uh, steam evaporates and the steam is collected. The steam is collected and uh, it is gone to the either the service system in an IC engine or uh, in an internal combustion engine system for various places or to the turbine for a steam shell. Now, the, now let's take in a motor shell or generally a boiler. Boiler, there are basically two types of boilers. Now fire tube or fire or smoke tube boilers where water, you know, are present around the tubes. Now, in the tubes, the flue gas passes, and outside the tubes, you have the water flowing on. Now, that's called as fire or smoke tube boilers. And water tube boiler, water flows in the tube, and the uh, you know water present in the tubes surrounding the fire, that is the surrounding the flue gases. The water is passed inside the tube, so it's called water tube boiler. Now, uses of steam. Where do we use the steam? We, let's see one by one. To drive the main propulsion steam turbine, that's in the steam ship. You're going to drive the main propulsion system. So, you need superheated steam. Here, steam is of three different varieties. Now, wet steam. Dry steam, superheated steam. Now, superheated steam is used for driving the main turbine, which is at a very high temperature, around 435 degrees centigrade. And uh, in a motor ship, the steam temperatures will be around uh, 150, 200, you know, and so and so on. Here, we don't, you know, uh, you know, IC engine ships. We don't even a motor ship. We call it. We don't use uh, superheated steams that much. But in a steam ship, we need superheated steams. Next, to run the cargo pump turbine in tankers, cargo pumps, you know, it's a tanker ship. If you say it's a steam ship, definitely it is a tanker ship. And uh, it's a tanker ship carrying very high ULCCs and VLCCs, you can say. Very uh, ultra large crude oil carriers or very large crude oil carriers carrying more than three and a half lakhs tons and so on, up to five lakhs and so on. Now, such ships, when you want to discharge the cargo, you, uh, I mean, instead of the electrical uh, pumping arrangement or a diesel driven pumping arrangement, you have the same steam utilized there to run the turbine and the cargo. It's a centrifugal pump down below the pump room, and the turbine system is in the engine room where we monitor, we preheat it, and we I mean, run the turbine where it is running the centrifugal pump to discharge the cargo. Heating duties. Next, third one. Main engine fuel oil heaters. We use it in main engine fuel oil heaters. That's what happens here, you see. Main engine fuel oil heater, you heat the oil and bring down the viscosity and use this in our main engine fuel system. Now, purify heaters, yes, of course, when you're going to go for cleaning, I will purify some clarifiers in Baran Oxford Missionaries, you will be studying about it. We heat the oil there, the purifiers. And uh, oil tank heating, yes, when we say, when we receive the bucket at 50 degrees centigrade, now you are going to maintain it, you are going to maintain it because you have to transfer the bunkers from the bunker tank to the settling tank. Now, if you have it, if you just take it at 50 degrees centigrade, just leave it like that without any heating. What's going to happen? The outside is the seawater temperature. It is in a double bottom tanks. You're storing this fuel bunkers in the double bottom tanks. It's going to take the seawater temperature, which is around 25 to 30 degrees centigrade or even 35 degrees centigrade. And it's very difficult to I mean, pump it to the settling tank. So we have to have a steam heating system in your fuel oil tanks. The, this is very, very important. Now, cargo heating. Yes, I am experienced about a cargo called uh, low sulfur uh, fuel oil, LSW uh, cargo, we call it. Now, the cargo itself is a low sulfur cargo where we uh, receive it in bulk and as a cargo point of it and discharge. Now, this cargo has to be recycled, recirculated. You have to use the cargo pumps and recir recirculate that oil and keep it under 
warm condition at a temperature of maybe 50 degrees, 40, 45 to 50 degrees centigrade for discharging the cargo. If not, what's going to happen is it's going to solidify. As it becomes cooler and cooler on a long voyage, it's going to solidify and then you will never be able to pump, discharge the cargo. So you need for cargo heating also. Now, air conditioning system and uh, uh, heating plants, yes, air conditioning, where? Now, air conditioning from a high temperature, uh, you know, air, we would like to have uh, from 35 degrees centigrade atmospheric air or outside air around uh, whatever the temperatures are 30 or so. We need uh, the accommodation to be comfortable at maybe around 22 degrees centigrade, 80 to 20 degrees, 22 is come very much comfortable. So, we have to maintain this temperature. So, now, when you go to cold climates, the North Pole and the South Pole regions, the cold climate regions, what are you going to do? If you just leave, the air is at a temperature of only maybe 10 degrees centigrade or even 5 degrees centigrade. Now, can we just put that air into the accommodation straight? No, it will not be comfortable for us to, you know, relax and take rest and to follow the next duties. Now, what happens is we heat that air used in the heating system, the air conditioning system. As you have the cooling media via the evaporator, you, uh, you send the freon and cool the air from 35 to maybe 25 or 30 to 20 or so. Here, you're going to heat from 5 to nearly 20 degrees. You're going to bring up the temperature and you also have a dehumidifier where, uh, where you know, you have to keep the uh, air under humid conditions, controlled humid. Now, calorify. Yeah, hot water. We need hot water for various purposes. Gallery fire is available where you can use steam. Gallery supply. Gallery, most of the time. You know, hot water we use to clean our vessel utensils and so on. Sea channels. Tracing lines for uh, pipelines heating system. Now, let me say this uh, tracing line, and it's a saturated stream. You don't need a superheated stream like these fellows. You need only saturated steam, but the wetness is there in that steam. So, for tracing steam, like for example, here, you are heating it to 990 CSD and bringing it down to 712 CSD. Now, from uh, while the heaters and the pipeline arrangements in the inner room. Now, as the oil passes from one point to another point, there is a chance that the temp I mean, temperature will come down and the viscosity will increase. That means this starts increasing. And if that starts, in, I mean, the viscosity starts increasing, you won't be able to burn the fuel. So, you have to keep it under 7 to 12 CSD condition means these, uh, you know, pipelines, you have to have a copper tubing arrangement, uh, you know, coiled on it and the steam passing on it, you know, and keep it warm, keep the externals also warm and comfortable to maintain the temperature. That is called as 316. Now, sea chest, this is very, very important in the Indian room and particularly when you are going to cold climates where you have to keep blow and uh, remove the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, substances, sometimes, you know, you have some choking, you have air blowing also, you know, steam, you know, so that, you know, it's kept warm and, uh, uh, you know, cold climates, you have to have it in the sea chest and now and then you have to blow it out. So, icing takes place, you know, you can just uh, remove them out. Next, to run turbo generator. Now, when you say turbo generator, you know, internal combustion engine where it's a motor share, you have diesel driven generators, diesel driven, driven gener diesel engine driven generators. But in a steamship, as it is when you are going to have a 72 bar boiler, 72 kg per centimeter square boiler, where it is going to produce hundreds of uh, tons of steam, you can just have a uh, you know, turbine uh, with a reduction gearbox and an alternator fitted to it. And you can clutch it, declutch it according to the requirement and you can generate power. So, you need a superheated steam. You need superheated steam for it. Yeah. To run cargo pump turbines, yes, I did explain about uh, how you are going to uh, run the, uh, I mean, uh, discharge the cargo. Now, to drive deck machineries like winches. Now, nowadays are all uh, hydraulic driven uh, winches, windlasses and so on. The good old days, I have a steam hand and I have steamed on steam ships. And I have, uh, uh, you know, experienced on deck. We have, uh, you know, all equipments like mooring winches and uh, windlass. They are operated by reciprocating steam turbine uh, steam system. So you have to have the warming uh, steam system right throughout the deck also. So deck machineries, like even whistle is also operated by steam. You can uh, have it. 
to uh, to drive steam driven bilges, I mean bilge stripping and other steam driven pumps. Now in steamships, all equipments mostly you will have a steam driven arrangement, either reciprocating or turbine system. To drive boiler feed pump turbine, that is superheated steam, to go on superheated steam here, yeah, 435 degrees centigrade. And the boiler feed pump to feed the water is also a turbine driven pump. It's of course a centrifugal pump, but of course coupled by a the prime mover is a turbine. Tank washing in tanker ships. You want to, after discharging a cargo, you want to take a different grade of cargo. You want to wash this uh, entire, uh, uh, you know, tanks, you know, cargo tanks. Now you can use steam to wash them out. Of course, under controlled conditions with the inert gas system and so on. I'm not going to go to so in deep into that one. That's a different uh, subject altogether. Now, for tank washing also we use steam. Now for uh, boiler soup blowers and steam optimizing burners. Now, in a motor ship, the fuel in the air is mixed and sent through the small uh, to the small uh, boiler to six to seven kg pressure boiler. The air is sent, mixed along with that, optimizing air. But in a steam ship, purely you cannot afford that good amount of uh, air, uh, atomizing air. So we use steam along with the fuel. It's called as a white jet burners, a huge big burners. We will be seeing it in the next coming classes, how big the burner size looks like. And uh, we'll be using steam there. Atomizing steam is used in the, uh, you know, uh, burners, burners point of it. Now, soap blowers. What is the soap blowers? No. As we, uh, you know, as we burn these, uh, burn the fuel, either in the motor ship or a steam ship, this soup is accumulated. As it passes through, you have seen those tubular, you know, combustion chamber area. The soot accumulates in that uh, place, is on top of the fuel, and it reduces the heat transfer. Now, in order to avoid the reduction in heat transfer and to get the best out of this flue gas temperature, you know, transfer of heat, so we do soot blowing. We use steam to blow the soot. It's got a long superheated soot blowers, three of them, and the economizer soot blowers, six of them, and the airy heater soot blowers, uh, two of them. And this, once in 24 hours, you have to do soot blowing to remove the soot out. Whether it's a steamship or a motor ship, you have to do soot blowing to remove the soot out. Point number 11, for fire fighting, as used in uh, steam smothering system, yes, like say in, uh, uh, you know, the scavenger underpistol systems in the IC engine, if you have a scavenge fire, those days we did have the steam smothering system, and, uh, you know, uh, okay, in uh, uh, other places you can use uh, steam smothering system for fire fighting, uh, as a fire fighting media. Now, main engine, jacket cooling water heaters, Lubric, uh, lube oil, uh, lube oil sump, drain tank, base coil incinerator, and slot tanks. These are the places we use steam. Now, main engine jacket cooling water heater. Now, as, as the engine is an anchor, I mean, the ship is an anchorage, and the main engine doesn't run, this jacket water, which is in circulation, has to be kept under warm condition at a temperature of 72 degrees centigrade and above we maintain. Now, you may ask why, why we have to maintain this temperature? Yes, for good combustion, quick starting of the engine, main thing is that quick starting of the main engine, where you're going to use this 7 to 12 CST of, uh, you know, fuel, you need to have, uh, if you want a good combustion, then you have to have a preheating, jacket cooling preheating system. Okay, in that case, then we are out at sea, when we are sailing, what happens to the jacket cooling water heater? No, we don't use this. It's, it's isolated. And in fact, the heat production by the jacket system, jacket cooling system is higher. It reaches above 85 degrees centigrade. The outlet of the, uh, you know, main engine jacket cooling system goes above 70, 85 degrees centigrade. And we use that to circulate it in a freshwater generator system. And we produce 
fresh water, distilled water. Of course, I'm not going to touch. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not going to touch on the fresh water generator. It comes under marine, marine auxiliary systems. They will. I mean, sir will teach you on fresh water generator systems. Yeah, waste heat, uh, waste heat oil. Of course, we use uh, incinerator and slop tanks. Yes, heating slop tanks, drain tanks, heating system. Loop oil also the same. Some tank has to be kept warm for better circulation. Now, steam ejector medium for ejector pumps and uh, vacuum devices. Now, this is purely on steam ships. Now, if you take on steam ships, the turbine, if you want to get the best out of the turbine, uh, uh, you know, efficiency to be improved, on the exhaust side, you have to have a vacuum arrangement, a vacuum pump removes the Air, I mean, air from the system, and not only that, keeps under vacuum. The exhaust piping system keeps under vacuum. As the steam passes the turbine, it quickly moves out, and you get the best RPM. Okay, and the system is kept under vacuum. Now, uh, that's why we need this steam ejector system. And when we come to the scene system on the pipeline diagrams, I will uh, explain more about it, and I've got more diagrams on it. And you can have an ejector pump arrangements too. Now, fresh water generator, evaporator, and heating medium. Now, when you are on long anchorages, of course, you are not supposed to run your fresh water generator at any given time. Uh, out at sea, due to some reason, your main engine main in has failed. And, uh, it, you know, you, you are running short of water. You cannot just be without water. So, what you do is, you can run your fresh water generator by the heating media. You know, you can use jacket cooling water, heating media is there. Now, here steam heating media, the inlet and outlet of the jacket cooling water, you shut off and use the steam heating media. Now, types of boilers. Coming to the core now, once again. Types of boilers. Now, I see, I'm, uh, as I said, you have a, a fire or a smoke tube and a water tube boiler. Yeah, water tube and a, um, you know, fire tube boilers. Now, here you have named some of the types of uh, boilers. Now, scotch boiler. Clarkson boiler, Cochrane boiler, and Spanner boiler. The design, it's all the design which varies on. Now, water tube boiler, of course, name some of the water tube boilers that we use is yes, uh, Babcock and Wilkinson, you know, Foster Wheeler, and uh, uh, Arrow type boiler. These are the boilers which we use. Now, water tube boilers have to a large extent, uh, so, so the, uh, you know, Scotch boilers for the supply of steam to the main and auxiliary missionaries. And now here, uh, of course, water tube boilers we use for the uh, internal combustion engine uh, uh, motor ships and uh, for, of course, our steam ships we use our Babcock and Wilkinson and Foster Wheeler and uh, your um, air boilers. Okay. Now, key, co key concepts, features and Boiler categories. Now, main boiler used for main propulsion vessel. Auxiliary boiler aids to propel some way. That is, example, heating system. Okay, heating systems for propulsion and uh, uh, quality of supply of uh, uh, supply boiler to be referred to as auxiliary boiler. Now, donkey boiler, tanker boiler, and so on. Now, I think it's time now. Can we just continue the next class? And uh, uh, now I'm going to stop with this. And uh, I just put it to uh, you now. If you have any uh, questions, please, you can come up now. You can ask me a few questions on whatever I have taught. I'll give you five minutes. Yeah, five to eight, ten minutes I can give you. Let's have an interaction session. Thank you very much.